I've been reviewing Windows laptops for over four years now and personally buying them for over a decade. And even though I'm a big Mac fan for many years, I've still recommended them for many people up until the end of 2020. But here at the start of 2021, I have to say that there are three specific reasons why you need to be very cautious if you're in the market for a new laptop and why buying one right now could be a huge mistake. And no, I'm not just gonna go out and tell you to buy an M1 Mac instead. Of course, there are still reasons to buy one and specific laptops that do make sense. So I'll make sure to cover that at the end and give you some tips on how to get a great laptop that'll have great performance, a good all around experience, and won't cost you a ton of money like it did me. As many of you know, we've mostly been focusing on compact 13 and 14 inch lightweight Windows laptops that have become the mainstream since they finally became decent in the last few years. Before that, most Ultrabooks that were trying to copy the MacBook Air were failing miserably. Their keyboards were way worse than 15 inch laptops, the displays were very dim and reflective, trackpads were horrible, and the same thing goes with speakers. I bought an Acer Ultrabook four to five years ago and it was pure garbage, and I ended up returning it for a Mac that cost more, but the experience was so much better even though the specs were worse. But when we started to review them, every upgrade cycle had decent improvements, starting with the build quality getting solid, with companies starting to use less plastic and more premium materials. As time went on, we got improved webcams, battery life finally started to compete with Macs, companies started putting in better SSDs, speakers were actually becoming usable, keyboards were also superior to Apple's butterfly keys, and even the diving board trackpads finally became responsive enough to use without needing a separate mouse. Not only that, but Intel finally started stepping up and creating better processors as well when their 10 nanometer finally came out, which resulted in battery life that could beat out a MacBook with older processors and performance that was also a little bit better and some laptops were actually offering better cooling as well. They also had some unique features that we loved like Windows Hello for login, slimmer bezels, and overall size as well. Of course, prices also went up at the same time to close to that or even exceeding Apple's MacBooks, but that made sense due to how much better the components were. Because of that, we routinely started to recommend them and we're saying that if you don't need macOS, these Windows laptops were definitely a better buy. And that was the case just six or so months ago, especially with the Dell XPS 13 9310. It was an absolute killer laptop with a display that was just as bright and color accurate as the MacBook Pros. And not only that, it was actually less reflective as well, which was a first for any Windows laptop. And the the keyboard is actually better than Apple's brand new Magic Keyboard in their new Macs. But now, I would be very careful buying one or any of the great alternatives that we reviewed. Why? Well, here is why I am frustrated and here's what's changed in just half a year. First off, you guys know that the biggest change in the laptop space is Apple's M1 processors, but that goes way deeper than Apple having better processor performance than last year, which I'll explain. And I also have multiple other reasons to share, but we'll start out with that. Back in June, after Apple announced the upcoming Apple Silicon Max, Vadim was super excited and he started making a series of videos about them. Now, now, a lot of people, including me, thought that he was being way too hyped up about the new Apple Silicon chips. And you couldn't really blame us. All of the Windows laptops that used ARM processors that made huge promises in battery life and performance ended up being terrible. Benchmarks were so-so, but once you factored in the price and their real-world performance, and especially compatibility, these ARM machines showed us that ARM wasn't ready for the mainstream. But Vadim wouldn't give up. He dug into Apple's white papers and super long press conference videos designed for engineers and developers and found very interesting bits of information that made it into videos and got the attention of tech enthusiasts along with even creators which called him out on his grandiose predictions. But you know what? He was absolutely right. When Apple launched the M1 Max, even though the machines looked exactly the same, we were blown away at the performance numbers, but we were still a little bit skeptical because they seemed too good to be true. At the same time, Apple ended up effectively lowering the average price of the M1 MacBook Air to $999. And while at launch, I thought it was the least interesting M1 Mac, this machine is what is hurting Windows laptops most 
released in 2021. And after doing extensive testing, we found out that Apple didn't overhype their M1 chips with the performance and battery life that they advertise, but they were actually being too conservative in many cases. These M1 machines absolutely killed the Intel-based MacBooks that came out earlier this year and did so while staying cooler and quieter. And in many cases, they cost less as well. Not only that, but in certain use cases, my M1 Mac mini smokes my $15,000 Mac Pro and in many others, it keeps up while costing less than 1 15th of the price, which is insane. These ARM chips are crazy. And because of this, Intel just pushed a huge media campaign trying to throw shade on Apple and promoting different Windows laptops just to keep trying to sell their processors to these major brands. And don't worry, I'll explain why this matters for Windows laptops as well. After a few months and tons and tons of testing and our long-term review, we finally gave our verdict that the M1 MacBook Air is the best Mac to buy as it performs almost as well as the Pro while being completely silent and costing $300 less at the same time. And on top of that, for just a few bucks, you can get it to out outperformed the Pro for just $999. And more than that, it is the perfect laptop or as close as you can get. And with us, everybody noticed as well, resulting in Mac sales growing 50% compared to the previous year, which is insane, and it makes sense why. For the first time, we had Windows fans praising Apple instead of hating on them, some buying M1 Macs when they have been avoiding MacBooks for years or even decades. At the same time, I had posted a few Windows laptops for sale, great ones like Microsoft Surface Book 3 and the Dell XPS. It's been over six months since I posted that machine and no one wants to buy it. I priced it low, even though this thing was $2,700 brand new with 32 gigs of RAM, higher than a 4K display, literally specced out, and now it's priced down to $1,000 and I can't get anyone to buy it and I can't really blame them. Dell has also been dropping their prices. A $2,700 laptop is now $1,935, probably because they aren't selling, and even though it might be tempting to pick up one of these machines, I wouldn't recommend it. I said at the start that I'm not just gonna suggest buying an M1 Mac, and I won't, but that definitely is a better option. Not only is an M1 MacBook Air way more powerful, it's also cheaper, and at the same time, the resale value will be way better. Every Mac that I've posted has sold in just a few days, even the Intel ones, not M1. My $1,800 four port sold for $1,400 in one day, whereas the $2,700 XPS has been up for over six months and can't sell for even a thousand. And I know some of you might say that you can only get 16 gigs of RAM on an M1 MacBook, but that 16 gigs performs way better than 16 gigs in a Windows machine, as we showed off in our XPS comparison in that RAM section, which I'll link down below. And when when comparing two similarly priced Mac and Windows machines, like the new LG Gram, which is a great all-around laptop, the M1 Air is better in basically every single way and costs $200 less. And on top of that, you can sell it a year later for almost no loss, whereas nobody's gonna wanna buy your LG, which is why Dave Lee had to make an update video saying that the MacBook Air is too good. And that's the next reason why you probably shouldn't be buying a Windows laptop in 2021, unless it's maybe the end of 2021. Everybody now knows that thanks to Apple's push, ARM is finally going to hit the mainstream. These machines have been out for years now with ARM processors and Windows laptops, but nobody cared because the software just wasn't there. But as soon as M1 came out, software companies scrambled to make their x86 apps work for ARM, and this is massively helping Microsoft as well. If you're going to buy a Windows Ultrabook, it is going to be outdated faster than ever before, and it will be replaced by similar Windows machines using upcoming ARM processors that will bring better performance in silent and cool packages with killer battery life, and you will soon want to upgrade just like many Mac users did. But unlike a Mac, it will be very tough to sell it, so you'll either have to give it away for almost no money back, or just gift it to somebody that you know. Because of that, if you wanna buy a laptop in 2021, unless it's a gaming laptop, I would either try your best to wait just a bit longer for a great new Windows R machine, or buy a Mac in the meantime. 
ARM is finally here and it's changing the laptop world. And if you absolutely need a Windows laptop and you need it now, buy it from somebody like me who has a crazy machine that they can't sell and will give it away for relatively nothing. Go ahead and check out Vadim's vid on how Apple finally put the final nail in Intel's coffin right over there. And if you enjoy this video, click above to subscribe to help us reach 1 million subscribers in 2021. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.